All right, I know some of you asked um, for question 618. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and explain it, um, how we work at it. Let's see. All right, so in 618, it gives you this rational expression we have to solve for it. I kind of bring it up over here. So we have x over x minus 1 minus 1 over x squared minus x equals 3. Um, in order to combine these, we got to get an LCD. So to get the least common denominator, it's going to help if we actually factor this out. So we get x over x minus 1 minus 1. GCF is x, x minus 1. So now we found our GCF. So if you look at our denominator, x minus 1 and x minus 1 are in common, so all that's missing is this x. So if we go ahead and multiply this side by x over x, we will end up with, simplify this left side, x squared minus 1 over x times x minus 1 equals 3. So all I've done is multiplied by the LCD here, which is similar to 1, doesn't change anything. And now I have... Um, x squared minus 1. Now you can see once we get to this point that you can actually go farther with it. So if we factor the top we get a difference of squares x plus 1 x minus 1 over x times x minus 1 equals 3. Simplify this, these cancel. So then we're left with x plus 1 over x equals 3. We can cross multiply, make this a 1 and we get 3x equals x plus 1. And now it's just simplifying it. Subtract 1 from each side. Actually, not subtract 1. Let's subtract x. x. And we get 2x equals 1. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. x will equal 1 half. All right. That's kind of all over the place. Let's look at uh, b. Maybe clean this up a little bit. All right, so in B, actually, let's go back to this. We can just go back down this slide. All right, so B gives us another rational expression. You're going to have to factor again. So we'll get X, factor the bottom. You're always looking for things that are alike to simplify, so you always kind of want to think factoring here. Where X plus 5 equals 1. Common denominator again, x plus 5 is in common. We have x minus 5 missing, so we're going to multiply each side by x minus 5 over x minus 5. If we work this out, we'll get x over x minus 5 times x plus 5 plus x minus 5 over x minus 5. x plus 5 is equal to 1. We can combine now. 2x is up top. We have our common denominators. So we can add these terms. 2x minus 5 over x minus 5 times x plus 5 equals 1. Cross multiply. We end up getting 2x minus 5 equals... Now we're kind of stuck. We're going to be multiplying this by 1. So we're actually going to go backwards, and we're going to do x squared minus 25. We're going to FOIL it again. Okay. Now the reason we're doing this is because we couldn't cancel anything there. So now we have a quadratic, so now we're going to move everything to one side. Subtract 2x, add 5, cancels. So now we're left with 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 20. And now we've got to see if we can factor. And it doesn't look like we can, so we might have to use the quadratic formula here. So since you can't use the, uh, you can't factor here, it's not factorable, we have to use the quadratic formula and you get x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 21. So you have two answers. x equals 1 plus or minus rad 21. 
Again, the process, find your LCD equal to 1. Um, then you can combine those terms, the x and the x to make 2x. Okay, 42 and uh, 43 were also asked, so I do want to look at both of those. Um, 42 is something we haven't really talked about much, um, inverse variation, and it's because we skip chapter 5. When we go back to chapter 5, this will make a little bit more sense. It says let g be an inverse square variation function where g of 4 equals 1.2. Um, find the variation function g, and then find g of 6 and g of negative 3. Now, since we haven't learned how to do this, I'm going to kind of set this up for you, um, do a little bit of teaching. So an inverse square variation function is going to look like this, and because it's inversely related, our equation, our basic equation will be y equals k over x. Now, because it's squared, and it already gives it to us, we're going to do y equals k over x squared, and there's an inverse relationship here, meaning when y gets bigger, x gets smaller. So if we were to graph this, the curve would actually look like this, kind of like the reciprocal function. We'll talk more about this in Chapter 5. Now, it gives you some information. It tells you that g of 4 is equal to 1.2. So my when my input is 4, my output is 1.2. So this is going to help us find our k. We want to solve for k. So if we substitute this in, we'll get 1.2 equals, we can think of this as x and y, k over 4 squared. You end up doing 4 squared times 1.2. k is equal to, I think it is, 19.2. So your first answer for your equation is y equals k oops, excuse me, we solve for k, 19.2 over x squared. This is your basic equation. Now, from there, actually, let me make this a little bit lighter. Um, from there, we need to find g of 6 and g of negative 3. So literally, all you're doing is you're just plugging that in. So you get y equals 19.2 over 6 squared. And for that, you end up getting, I think, 8 over 15. And then you'll do the same thing for, what is it, negative 3, 19.2 over negative 3 squared. And for this one, you end up getting 32 over 15. So now we're just evaluating, plugging in. Um, we'll talk about this more in Chapter 5. This is inverse variation. And direct variation will look like this when x and y get bigger at the same time. So this is direct. All right, the last question that was asked was 43. Do you that now? Find the inverse of f of x equals 1 plus x over x plus 2. Um, same as all the other problems we've looked at in terms of inverse. I think it might actually help if I write this out in another place. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we have more room to work with. So 643. Find the inverse. So find f inverse of 1 plus x over x plus 2. All right, so just like all our other inverse problems, start out, rewrite f of x in terms of y. Now we're going to switch x and y. So you get x equals 1 plus y over y plus 2. Let's move this uh, 1 over to the other side. x minus 1 equals y over y plus 2. Now we have to eliminate the y plus 2. So Get rid of this fraction, at least. That will help. I'm going to multiply each side by y plus 2. Here's where the math starts getting a little bit more complex. Now we're going to need to distribute. This is going to look wild. We're going to need a FOIL. So we are left with yx minus y plus 2x minus 2 equals y. 
Now remember the whole goal here is to get the Y's on the same side. So let's move all of our Y's over to one side. Subtract Y, X, add Y. Subtract Y, X, add Y. Just cancel. 2X minus 2 equals 2Y minus YX. Getting there. All right, now the whole purpose of getting the Y's on the same side is now we can pull one out. So we're going to pull out a Y. Still have 2x minus 2 on this side. And we have 2 minus x left. That's our GCF right there. That's our big move to make 2y's become 1. Now divide each side by 2 minus x. This is all algebra. And our final equation, our f inverse, f of negative 1 of x equals 2x minus 2 over 2 minus x. And that would have been really hard to figure out just from the original equation, f of x, which is this. Um, there's no real way to work backwards there. Key steps along the way here. Um, you are switching x and y. x and y switch. After you switch x and y, you're moving the x's or all the y's to one side. So I, y's are isolated. Isolate your y's and then use the GCF on it. All right. All right, I hope that helps. Three homework problems. Check them off.